a customer brought in a modified OLED for repair. He mentioned that the power button wasn't working, so he had to wait for the console to completely run out of power before he could start it again. However, upon inspection, I discovered that there were additional issues with the console. When we connected the battery to the console, it turned on briefly, booted to Hecate, and then turned off immediately. In this video, I will attempt to fix it. Here's the issue. When we connect the battery to the console, the mod chip starts blinking and goes through the glitching process. It then boots to Hecate, but immediately shuts off afterwards. When encountering this type of issue, it may be related to the power management policy. The console seems to detect the battery as an external power source, but then incorrectly shuts off once it realizes the mistake. Charging the console is not an issue, as it correctly detects the external power source and continues to boot as if no error had occurred. And I didn't find anything suspicious in the battery info. The console continues to state power on even after removing the charger, indicating that the battery supply is functioning well. But, this battery charging sign is suspicious because the charging icon should not be displayed when booting the console without the charger. The HOS is fine, but yes, the power button is not functioning. So there are two issues with this console, the automatic power on feature when the battery is connected and the malfunction of the power button. I had to forcefully remove the SD card in order to power off the console. And now let's try to disconnect the power button flex cable. If you believe the power button is the main issue, then we are mistaken. The console still turns on when the battery is connected, even after disconnecting the power flex cable. Let's now test the power button function. I set my multimeter to the continuity mode and check the button function, and it is working just fine. Since the power flex cable is working fine, we can rule it out as the possible problem and concentrate on other areas to investigate. Now let's inspect the power button motherboard track using the XCC platform. This pin is connected to the power button and this track is connected to two resistors. The resistors are passive components that do not actively amplify or generate signals. By clicking on the opposite side of the resistor, the signal reaches the MAX77620 HPM IC chip on the other side of the motherboard. So from this pin, it connects to the MAX77620 HPM IC chip. When I measured the diode value of that pin using the black probe while the red probe on the ground signal, I got 0.937 volts. When you compare it with the XCZ platform, the value difference is about 0.122 volts. But that is not the point. When I measure the diode value in reverse using the red probe, I got 1.110 volts. Measuring the pin using a different OLED board with the black probe gives us the same value, which is 0.939 volts. However, when we measure the pin using the red probe on another OLED board, it shows OL, indicating no continuity. Since the pin is connected to the MAX77628, we can conclude that this chip is not functioning as intended. In this section, I will remove and replace the MAX77628 chip. First, let's apply some flux to the perimeter of the chip. Get the hardware one and set it to a temperature that can melt the lead-free solder. Carefully move it around the chip until you are able to remove it.
and we have successfully extracted the chip. And now we will remove the existing solder ball by using a solder wick. Apply a low melt solder to lower the melting temperature of the lead free solder. and clean the area with IPA. Apply some flux to the solder pads. Get the replacement chip and line it with the solder pads. Use the dot on the top right of the placement area as a reference. Then solder the chip using the hot air one. Ensure that the chip is perfectly soldered by gently nudging it a tiny bit. After soldering the new Max 77628, I tested the power button pin with the red probe and obtained the OL value, indicating that everything should be fixed. Now it's time to test the console. Let's connect the battery. The chip isn't turning on, which is a good sign. Let's try turning on the console with the power button. And yes, now the power button works. Let's wait until it reaches Hecate. And another yes, the console is working fine and doesn't turn off immediately. And the battery info shows no error. The HOS is working fine too, and the power button is functioning properly. Let's check everything before notifying the customer. The battery charging is functioning properly, and we have fixed the console issue. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.